Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to do another episode of checking out one of your guys solar systems. So without further ado let's get straight into this system. So yeah this system is from Siren today. The uh, It's called the Narvarus system. I believe it's a update to a version of this system that we saw um, quite a few weeks ago, maybe even a month ago now. So yeah let's go ahead and see what updates he has done that to this system. So apparently he replaced a lot of objects due to it um, not being compatible in the newer version of the game. So, yeah, let's see what he has got for us here. Okay, right. Let's see here. Right, okay, I remember that object straight away. Okay, cool. Right. So, we'll go ahead and zoom out like we um, always do. So, uh, where are we here? Okay, so there's the full system. Right. So, the star itself is a yellow star which formed in the middle of a nebula and has six planets orbiting around it. The star is turned into a red giant in the uh, coming few millions of years and it will expand even more and make worlds uninhabitable for the alien life in this system. So there you go, right. Cool, cool. So if we look at its stats, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to get there eventually, but it's not um, as big as the sun currently. Okay. Right, first planet out, Valia, is one of the twin gas giants. Oh, that does look cool. So it's one of the twin gas giants which exists mostly out of hydrogen, which is slowly evaporating because of the hot temperature of this world. It is the brightest of the twin gas giants which separated from each other a few million years ago. The orbits became unstable, which caused this planet to move closer to the star. Right, okay, so there's that one. Right, next up we've got Ferion here. So it's a tiny locked world which has large oceans of water covering the surface, which doesn't evaporate because of the atmospheric pressure of this world. It was once believed that this planet could have more habitable temperatures for alien life in the system, but after the star started expanding more, a lot of the water evaporated, creating a thick atmosphere. Right, so let's have a little look underneath it. So there it is, so a completely barren wasteland area now. So there it is, okay, cool. Right, so next jump out. So next up we got um, Verneo over here. It's a planet with life on its surface. Its atmosphere exists um, out of more than 60% oxygen, 2.4% uh, nitrogen, and hydrogen sulfide 5%. Okay. But no, no, I got that. I completely butchered that. 60% oxygen, 20% nitrogen, 2.4% hydrogen, sulfide, uh, and 5%. Okay, CO2. Cool. Right. And the rest of these are just noble gases like here on Earth. The surface is full of eroding craters and mountains with oceans full of alien algae, plants, and dangerous fish like creatures. The dangerous planet only has a few colonies of the alien race because of the dangers that roam on this world. So there you are. There's a good look at it there. Interesting stuff. You can see there's a few red city lights on it as well. So there you go. Cool, cool. I think I had a moon as well. Is that a moon? So what's this here? Okay, so Eroli here. I hope I'm saying that right. Looks like it's a version of Europa. It's the only moon of Verino and has a strange surface and thin atmosphere. The atmosphere on this world is barely visible and is expected to be a very volcanic active because of the young surface of the moon. Okay, cool. So there it is. Cool. There's a planet um, above it there, so good stuff there. Cool, cool. All right, next up we got Eon here. Eon is the current location of the alien race that thrive on this world. Just such a good-looking planet that I remember this one. Um, alien race and current E houses the biggest variety of plant life. Mua used to be an aquatic world of only a few patches of land, but when the aliens arrived here, they drained large pieces of land on which they built their cities and thrive. Cool, cool. Right, so here's Mua. Cool, cool. So Muir is a massive moon of Eon, which is terrified by the alien race and currently has the biggest variety of plant life. Does look good, I have to say. Um, Muir used to be an aquatic world of only a few patches of land, but when the aliens arrived here, they drained large parts of... Oh, almost, oh no! <laughs> I read it in the wrong way round. Whoops, this is for the moon. There's also a passage station here. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it's the planet itself, Eon, is the current location of the alien race. They thrive on this world of crystal clear waters, jungles, forests, and even some savannas on the surface. Okay. The planet used to be a normal planet with some plants and creatures already dwelling on the surface, but after the alien race began to terraform, a lot has changed. Right, so there's that world. Cool. Right, and then the passive station we just saw is a space station created by the alien race to travel between the worlds and the other systems. Okay. And then there's also that Easter egg. I remember that Easter egg world. Um, next up we got um, Mormia over here. It's the third and final moon of Eon. So there it is over there. Um, it's a small object which orbit is very elliptical because it is believed that this object was captured by Eon thousands of years ago. Cool, cool. Right. So where's that gateway at? Let's see if we can find it. That was the Easter egg. Can we find it anywhere? So you got this world. I don't think it's that one. 
think it was quite far away, wasn't it, the gateway? I can't remember where it was located. Or was it... So I, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see if we can find it later on. But, yeah, there's Eon. Okay, so next up, we got this object here. Oh, this one's very dark. So this is Aria. Okay. So the first and only moon of the gas giant, Varia. Oh, look, so this is Varia here. Okay, so this one is very, very dark, as we can see. You can barely see it. It's got a lot of negative contrast on it. Okay, so it's the second of the twin gas giants, also the biggest of the two. It is unknown how the gas giant became so dark but because of its colour. It's hard to spot and even weirder to get close to. It acts like any other gas shine and exists out of the same materials, but the dark colour is an answer yet to be answered, or a question yet to be answered. And then we've got uh, Varia is the first and only moon of the gas giant. Um, Varia, or Aria, I think it means. It exists mainly out of iron and silica um, and has a dark colour to it, which probably formed during the creation of the object, which may mean it may have once been geologically active. Okay, cool. Right, so next up we are taking a jump to Igua. It's a very small planet with a tiny atmosphere. It is believed this small world was once a moon of the twin gas giants, but it got slingshotted. Um, okay, it has three moons. So first moon here. So this is Yeon. So Yeon is an asteroid which um, orbits around Igor. It's surprisingly organic materials on its surface. Uh, next up we have Pella here. I'm guessing it's this one. This is Pella, yeah. Uh, it's the second largest moon and also the second moon of Igor. The surface and core of this world is... Almost similar to that of Vigor itself, which means it probably formed in the same materials and around the same time. Okay, cool. And lastly, we've got this one over here. So this is um, Irius. It's a large enough to keep its rounded shape. There are multiple craters visible on the surface of this larger moon um, um, of Vigor, and its surface is just out of many materials found on other worlds of this solar system, which could mean it was made during collisions between the other bodies of the system. Excellent. Okay, cool. Right, so now we're taking the jump out. I think we're heading to the second star down here. This is. Um, at all. It's the second star of the solar system and there's a massive gas shunt which has enough mass to become a brown dwarf. Ah, cool. Cool. The same planets around it. has a ring around it. Some materials. Right, cool. Right, so uh, first up we got um, Algalia. It's the first planet orbiting around at all. Oh, that does look cool. I remember this one. Um, it was terraformed by the alien race and is a safe distance around the star. On the closer distance, which causes it to be hotter at most impacts with smaller objects from the rings of Atoll. Because it was hotter temperatures, it isn't the best place for exotic plants to thrive, but that doesn't mean they can't survive it. Alglair is a small planet, but has enough mass to keep its water and house a stable atmosphere. Okay, then we've also got this moon down here, so this is Ripium. It's a minor moon which houses a lot of hydrogen and iron, so most of the ships of the alien race mine this moon for resources. Hey. Right, next up we've got Dio, Diosus, I hope I'm saying these names right, I probably haven't though. <laughs> uh, this is a planet similar to Earth, it formed life on its own, oh that does look cool. Formed life on its own, it has clouds of hydrogen and water vapour which have amazing colours during the day. It is a planet which doesn't house many individuals of the alien race due to the amount of large dangerous creatures which roam around on the surface of this world. The atmosphere is big and creates amazing colours at sunset and sunrise. Oh yeah, I can see why, I mean that is a, that's awesome. Excellent. Right, next up we've got uh, Fininess. It's the largest object in the solar system without an atmosphere. It is mainly, well, mostly made out of iron and doesn't show many impact craters on the surface. However, it shows many darker spots and even some dark light river marks on the surface, meaning this planet once had rivers of lava flowing on the surface. Excellent. And yeah, there we go. So system and objects created by Siren001. Thank you for taking a look at the system. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, I definitely did. Excellent stuff indeed. And then last we got a mare over here. I don't think you had a description for this one, but here it is. So there it is. Cool. Right, so let's see if we can try and find where that um, Easter egg was. I remember it was... So here it is. So is it around Eon? What's this object here? Oh, yes, here. Here we go. So this was the Easter egg. It was the monolith. That's it. Yeah, I remember this from the uh, previous system. Yeah, so that is obviously not very easy to spot. I mean, that is just in the middle of nowhere. So, yeah, there you go. Cool. Yeah, I really enjoyed that system. So, yeah, there's um, Atul again. Looks like he actually put... I think he put a star inside this gas giant to give it that effect yeah cool but yeah there we are oh never mind though no, it actually appears as a star for some reason but here it's a planet that's rather bizarre isn't it what's going on there <laughs> oh that is very strange it's also it's supposed to look like the red star but yes that's rather bizarre indeed but yeah there we go so that is this system guys so hopefully you all enjoyed it again especially thanks to siren for sending this in and yeah guys if you'd like to send in your own simulations make sure to join my discord server link in the description 
and yeah you can upload your simulations in there but yeah that all said done let's see if we can go for 30 likes on today's video guys um, subscribe if you're new helps on a journey to 22,000 subscribers and yeah guys i'll see you in the next video goodbye